Hey guys, Steve here, Zoo Adventures, cold, rocky coast habitat. I'm in a place where the temperature can get down to 40 or 50 below zero in the Arctic. Um, this is a rocky coast habitat. We're gonna talk about polar bears today, see some really cool training and learn a lot about their, about, about, about I'm, I'm, let's go, I'm too cold, let's go, I'm gonna, let's, come on. I can see, so we're here with... Hi guys, this is Nikita. This is Nick. This is, or Nick for short. Uh, he's our 13 year old male polar bear here at the North Carolina Zoo. And we're gonna attempt to do a little bit of a training session with him at our window here in our polar bear ice cave. What's he looking at? So what is he looking at? This exhibit is really cool because we actually have the potential to climb up onto the roof and do training sessions from here. Whoa. So. I'm going to be training him at the window, but I do have a fellow keeper up on the roof with all of his goodies. Uh, so when he does something correctly, he's going to get a reward. So he can hear her up there. He can smell her up there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to get his attention on me. Um, and then I'll actually, you'll hear me on the radio uh, telling Sarah that it's okay to reinforce him that he's done the behavior correctly. Oh, okay. So you could, that's right. You can't reinforce him. You can't right. give him that treat from here, can you? Exactly. So okay. this is a big uh, window pane. Uh, so you can't see it. it. does look like he's right here with me, but he's not. There is a big thing of glass in between him and I. Knock on that. Yeah. Is it really there? It's All right. Really just want to make sure. It's really there. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get his attention. And then I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the type of training that we're doing with him today. All right. Let's see. Hi, good guy. So right here in my hand is what we call a target or a target pole. Okay. And all of our animals are trained to touch their nose to this pole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get his attention with this pole really quickly. Um, and he'll come up to the glass and touch it wherever it is. Right now he's really focused on his food. <laughs> it is breakfast time. Uh, hey! He's like, uh, how about you just give me the food for free? Right. Give me a, I did good, right? I, I did good, present. I'm sitting right here, nice and pretty for you guys. Hi, he touches. He's being Maybe. shy, it looks like. He's like, ah. Uh, a little shy, a little lazy is what oh, I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> right now lazy. he's looking for a free meal is what's happening. He's like, can you just throw that to me? <laughs> Hi. Nick. He's like, nope. How old is Nick? So Nick is 13 years old, and he is one of two polar bears that do live here at the North Carolina Zoo. We also have a female named Inanna. <laughs> So he can Whoa. see her. He stands at about 11 feet tall. Are 11 you and kidding feet me? Tall. No, he's a big boy. That's like a basketball hoop and a foot. That is, yes, yes. He would be an excellent player. Target, good boy. Sarah, you can reward him. He, he put his nose on the target. Yes. You had a reward in here, and I heard you whistle too? Yes. And then you call Sarah for the for the for reinforcer, the for, the, yep. for the what it is, it's, he's good. So he can hear the whistle, he knows it's there, so that's my way of oh, telling him, good job, okay. now you're gonna get something. So we're gonna get him to focus again one more time, and then we'll ask him for some other behavior. Well, look at that. Yeah, he is pretty, uh, he's big. He's a big boy, he's weighing currently at about 1,100 pounds, target. Nice. Reward. <laughs> he lets it hit the ground. He's, I'm not catching it. It's fine down here. And those are fish? These are fish. So he gets a variety of diet. He's currently getting trout, herring, and uh, capelin. Okay. Um, and you'll also see us throwing some meat to him, some lettuce. He does get a little bit of produce in his diet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have him open up his mouth for us. All the way. Oh, he's not holding it very well. There we go. <laughs> Reward. And why would you do that? Why so would you this, need to? Yeah, so this is an important behavior because it allows us to check into his mouth and look at his teeth um, and make sure that all of his teeth are nice and healthy. Okay. That way, if we ever need to call the dentist, we can. Foot. Reward. We can also check his paws, um, and I'll show you his other paw too. Uh, this is gonna allow us to make sure his nails are looking good. 
that uh, his, the pads of his feet are nice and healthy. Um, and then we can also take blood from his paw. So um, he's got a vein that runs right in between his toes on the top of his paw. You can't um, do that out here, can you? We can't do it out here, but we do have a, a sleeve that he can stick his foot in behind oh, the scenes. Oh, okay. So he's trained to do that. Let's see if he wants to refocus. We'll show you his other foot. Hi. He's like, uh, no, I know that's where the food is coming from. I know you don't have it, lady. I, I tell you, that's a pretty cool system you have, though, that he's able to put that together. He's, that's pretty smart. Yes, he's extremely really intelligent. Is. Hello, sir. He doesn't want to hold any of his behaviors right now, but he's extremely intelligent. Um, he loves to train and loves to learn new things. Okay. But. Wow. Can you give him a couple for that? He's also, uh, he knows probably about 20 to 25 different behaviors. Um, so he's really motivated by working with us most of the time. There are certain times of the year he's not super thrilled about working with us. Right. Uh, usually when it involves him and Anana being together. Right. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, he really, really loves to train. And so this is one way that we can help keep him um, motivated throughout the day and focused and just keep his day different. Let's see if he comes over here. We'll ask him to see his mouth again. So you're trying now to get him to open his mouth, right? Yes. So right now I'm trying to get his to focus on me because as you can see, he's sniffing around. Sure. He's looking for Sarah. He knows she's up there with her food, okay. his food. Uh, so once he focuses on me, I'm going to ask him to open his mouth again. Maybe. Hi. Hello, sir. So close. So close. He is very food motivated, as you can tell. <laughs> well. So are so the educators here in North Carolina. Is there? Yeah, so are the zookeepers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can focus on that one more time. Sure. Is that kind of redirect, kind of get you Yeah, get his attention, like, attention you like I'm down here. It is a little bit different when there's not a lot of guests here. Wow. Reinforce. And Sarah can't quite see, I'm sure, about the timing and everything else up there. Right, and she can't hear me when I'm telling him he's doing a good job. So we don't okay. want her to accidentally reinforce something that he's not doing correctly. Okay. It looks like he's not into the trout. He's waiting for the herring, which is his <laughs> absolute favorite. Hi! Ready? Here we go. Mouth. Whoa. Reinforce. That was fantastic. Yeah. And again, we look at the mouth, look at the teeth. You look at his gum line. Gum line. Yep, look at his tongue. Make sure that everything looks oh, nice cool. and healthy in there. And I'm going to make an assumption that it looks pretty good. Yeah, he's looking pretty good today. Uh, usually, he's, he's, he hasn't had any dental issues. Um, when he does get his annual vet check, we do make sure that we do clean his teeth then, too. So our vets do make sure that they at least look in there once a year. Yep. All right, let's see if we can get him to lay down for you. No worries. Yeah, this is something that is new for him at the window. This is not a new behavior, uh, but he okay. just recently started doing this. So we'll see if we can get his attention. That's the opposite of laying down, Nick. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'm giving you permission to be lazy right now. Right, Hi. right. Down. You can do it. All yes, the way, all the way, all the way. I know you're really big, but you can kick those feet out. How about this way, if we go down this way? Nick! Hi! Can you go down? What if you do this? Down. So this is the basic behavior that we use to shape all the behaviors you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, if we hold the target pull down low, he knows he's got to go down low to touch okay. it, and then eventually we can fit it out. Hi! So while he is really smart, this is um, like just like anything, learning something new is, can be challenging, it especially if he's not yeah, sure. uh, used to doing it. So he does lay down, he knows it really well behind the scenes, yeah. but we don't really ask it a lot out here, um, especially if there's large crowds, it can be a little confusing if he's looking at a lot of other people. Um, so he just recently started doing it, uh, but it has been a little bit of a while since we've asked for it. And you can tell he's not the most motivated right now. 
Yeah, there's all kinds of other things going on. The yeah. weather is a little bit different out there. Yeah. Sarah, he's walking away. Give me a second. So can you guys imagine trying to train? You guys can do the kind of thing at home, of course. Absolutely. So um, all the training that we do it is po through positive reinforcement. Okay. So when he does something that we ask, we reward it with something that he wants. There he goes again. Now, if he, as you can see, he's uh, not doing a lot of what we're asking right now, which is fine. Uh, all the training that we do is voluntarily based. So if he doesn't want to participate, that's okay. He doesn't have to. Okay. He's still going to get all of his food regardless. Steve, how tall are you? I'm 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. Hi, bud. Wow. So I think what we're going to do to keep this positive is we're just going to ask for one more simple mm -hmm. behavior, reinforce him, and then I think we're just going to give him some uh, toys to play with. And oh, out. awesome. Um, like I said, he doesn't have to participate if he doesn't want to. As you can see, he's not very motivated right now. He's definitely not a morning bear. <laughs> Anybody out there not a morning bear, huh? <laughs> Christina says she's hey. not a morning bear either. Hey. Hi! Can you just do one more for me, bud? Like, you do know it's raining, right? He's, yeah, he's also <laughs> not a fan of the rain. A lot of times you'll see him behind the scenes in the rain. He'll just be sleeping all day. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> And again, another behavior I'm sure that some of our some of our digital guests can relate to. If it's raining, you're going to be in bed for a yep, little bit. Yep, and that's definitely him. No, <laughs> most of the time, he prefers to be outside unless it's in the rain. He's not a big fan of the rain. So that could be a factor too. So I didn't do a too bad of a job. He didn't right? do too bad of a job, but what I might have Sarah do is I might have Sarah ask for him to actually do behavior from up top, since oh. that's where he's focused up, um, which he's also trained to do, okay. and then um, reinforce him that way. Okay. Hey, Sarah, can you do me a favor? Can you ask him for an up, and then reinforce him, and then toss him his enrichment? Good for all right, so I'm going to take a step forward just so he knows that he's looking at Sarah. Yeah, so you're kind of. Which done. he's kind of uh, already looking at Sarah. You can see that he's more responsive to him. So this is a behavior he does know. This is a behavior that he has on cue. Um, this is an up behavior. Oh, and you're probably thinking, why is this an important behavior to have? Yeah. So not only can we check out his underside, his belly, um, we could look at his whole body. Okay. But we can also do things like a stethoscope behavior. Oh, so when we're behind the sure. scenes, we don't have solid glass. We have a, we have a um, mesh fencing between us and the bears. And he will actually press his whole chest up against the mesh fencing and let us touch him. And that's oh, how we can actually listen to his heart, um, you know, throughout, sure. throughout the like day. Little, yeah. yeah. And like a child, I'm sure you've got to get that. You've got, he's got to understand that that's a good thing. Exactly. So what Sarah's doing now is he did that behavior for her um, what, that she asked. Um, and so she's going to be tossing him some food. Uh, we threw some enrichment uh, items. So right now what he's interacting is with one of his toys. It's got a hole, a small hole in the front. Okay. So we actually put polar bear chow in that. Um, and yes, he gets chow. Just like a regular old, like a, like a, like a kibble? Like, like a kibble, yeah. Okay. Except uh, it's much bigger. Uh, <laughs> um, it's not like the size, it's bigger than your dog food at home. Okay, okay. But it is specifically made for polar bears, so it has a lot of oils and fats and vitamins that they okay. would need. Um, obviously, their main diet out in the wild is seals. Right. And we love our seals here, so we're not going to give them no. seals. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate that, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so they we try to make up their diet with other things. Um, that, to supplement that. So okay. that polar bear chow is one of them. Um, you're going to see some lettuce down here. Yeah, I saw some romaine. That's kind of cool. Yes. Yeah, so on the wild, they would eat a little bit of produce. Sure. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. And so we do give them romaine lettuce. Okay. Um, and we actually stuck some grape jelly in there because grape jelly is his favorite. Of course it is. It's his favorite extra treat. So anytime that he needs extra vitamins or whatever we can sneak it in oh ah, it's kind of like orange juice when i always done exactly. it into orange juice that'll be fine a little bit of peanut butter exactly nice um and then we also have um a log of meat out there so yeah. he is eating this it's called nebraska it's the company that makes it and Whoa. it is a ground beef mixture <laughs> um and it actually has 
a lot of, it's not human grade ground beef. It's got bones and hair oh. uh, and organs in there and all the things that they would be eating out in the wild um, is mixed up in there. So sure. it's got a lot of good vitamins in it for him. Um, and then we also tossed him some ice like treats. It. Yes, that's one of his <laughs> favorites. And then we also made some ice treats for him. Those are the orange, yellowy things yes. that are thrown out there? Yes. Now okay. these uh, have orange juice in them a little bit. Um, these, uh, and it also has a little bit of beef lard. So a little bit of beef fat in it. Okay. Um, we do supplement their diet. We do give them fat uh, throughout the week. Um, Does so that change throughout the season? Uh, it can change throughout the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, throughout the season, their dietary needs are going to change. Sure. How much is he eating? Currently, he's eating about, let's see, he's getting about, I want to say 30 to 40 pounds of food a day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, about 30 to 40 pounds. 30 to 40 pounds. We found out that, we found out that 30 pounds for the gorillas is equal to about 17 heads of lettuce. Yes. So let's, if we, if, we, if we turn that into a quarter pounder with cheese, because he's also a meat eater as well. Yes. He's, he's he mostly meat. So a quarter pound, 30 pounds, 120 quarter pounder About. cheeseburgers. About, yes. 120 quarter pound cheeseburgers. And he would let us eat it, he would eat it all and want, still want more. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So beef lard is one of the favorite his favorite things. Um, so, but we don't try to we try not to use a ton of it. We yep. only give him a little bit, and usually we give it to him for special occasions. Um, so one of the things, like I said, is that he does um, that blood draw behavior. Oh yeah. Um, it is voluntary. Doesn't mean he likes being stuck with a needle. Nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody so we'll does. try to save that beef lard or that beef fat for those sessions where he's doing something extra difficult. Okay. Um, or sometimes he gets a little special treat when we're not really working out much right now. Well, he did great today. I mean, he deserves it today for sure. Yes, ish. Fair enough. For not me, very focused on for me. For me, for Wendy, for our digital guests, he did really well. Yes, he is definitely, um, like I said, he really loves to train. He really loves to new, learn new behaviors. Um, right now, we're kind of in a little bit of an off pattern with our, our daily schedule. So yeah. it's up to us to make sure that his day um, tries to stay as normal as possible. Right. We want to make sure we're training with him as much as possible, that we're providing enrichment all throughout the day like we would. Yep. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, uh -oh. there comes the some fish. more fish. Here comes the fish. And I think we also have a bone up there. So Sarah's going to also oh. finish tossing him his, some of his food. Um, it's going to look like a lot, but remember, this is only about half of his diet that we brought with us today. This is half. This is half. Um, and then he'll have another half that we'll use for the rest of the day. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you did tell me once already, Christina, what are the fish again? So he's getting three different types of fish right now. He's getting trout, okay. capelin, and herring. And herring, okay. And herring. And herring is his favorite. Capelin would probably be second. Trout is hit or miss. Sometimes, some seasons, he really loves the trout, and then other times of the season, he would prefer to not eat it. So just like we have our favorite foods, so do they. Yep. I'm all about a pizza. Exactly. I'm all about the tacos. So. Nice. So pretty much the one, the few things that he loves all year round are going to be herring and that fat, that beef oh, fat. Those are probably, and grape jelly, of course, that grape jelly we talked about a little bit earlier. He is a big boy. And the enrichment, things you're throwing out there, getting him to solve a problem, getting him to use those senses, kind of like you might in the wild a little bit. Absolutely. So uh, we want to make sure we're trying to encourage natural behavior for these animals. Okay. Um, and that's what the whole point of enrichment is. So we want to make sure that these guys would forage, these guys would hunt. They would use that excellent sense of smell. Polar bears can smell up to 20 miles away. Um, and that's how they're gonna hunt for their food. It's also how they're gonna find mates out in the wild. Um, so by us being able to put enrichment all over the habitat, mm -hmm. um, we're encouraging him to use that nose. Uh, what you saw, he couldn't see Sarah, but on the roof, he could smell her. Great he knew point. she was up there. Um, and then we also wanna make sure that uh, he's using those big paws to scrape out the 
he would pounce on the ice and break up the ice using those paws. Oh, so okay. by giving him thicker ice treats, that's encouraging that get... pouncing or scraping. Yeah, he's got to be digging a little bit. Cool. And we want to make sure that his day is busy and fun. So we uh, do enrichment all throughout the day. And we do different kinds of enrichment. It doesn't always have to be food based in food. Okay. That's kind of like I would think that the, the food inside the, or the, like you said, the, the polar bear food inside that little black box. Yes. Yes, so we have some um, polar bear chow in there, which he looked like he was going to go for, but then the yeah. fish started coming down. So you can uh, definitely tell where his favorite is. He'll come back point. to it. He did stop. That's true. Because yeah. he, he picked he, it up and carried it, didn't he? He was going to start playing with it, but then he was like, ah, there's fish. There's fish. Fish is awesome. I like fish. Anybody else there that like fish? I do love sushi. Oh, there you go. I am a fan of sushi. That's kind of like what he's eating now. Yes, exactly. At least, at least the raw part of yes, it. Yes, the raw part, yes. <laughs> wow, he's doing great. And he looks good. He's dirty. He is a dirty bear. <laughs> he's a dirty bear. <laughs> he is also, you're also going to notice that you see a lot of black patches on him. That's his skin. What? Um, yeah, he's actually shedding right now a little bit. So he's shedding his old fur and he's growing in that new fur. So you are going to see a little bit more of his skin right now. I see. Um, but he does love to roll around in the dirt and in the grass. Um, and there he goes trying to get that chow out. So that's manipulating with the paws a little exactly. bit. Moving things around, thinking, knocking that over a little bit. Right. We saw the black bears a while back. We did th we did a program over at the black bears where it was kind of good camp, bad camp. Okay. And we watched black bears, the ones here, uh, Nova and Luna, getting into coolers. Yes. Literally opening the cooler and closing the cooler. Yes. So it's kind of neat to see that these guys are doing the same thing. They're manipulating, they're moving things with their paws. Yes, and one of his favorite enrichments and one of my favorites to give him are new big pickle barrels. Huh. So, um, pickle barrel. yeah, we get pickle barrels donated to us and then we'll wash them out, we'll clean them out. Yep. Um, and then we give them to him whole. And he'll actually, not only will he throw it around, but he'll pounce on it like he would as if he was breaking like ice breaking to find a seal. The ice. That's so those awesome. are like my favorite behaviors when they start yeah. pouncing on things. Yeah. How neat. Now, I'm one of the questions we always get is like, where's Anana right now? So Anana right. is on our other habitat. They are solitary unless it's the breeding season. Great point. Um, and so we always get the question, is he lonely? Nope, they actually really enjoy being on their own. Yep. Um, they can smell each other. They can hear each other. Uh, so they know each other's there. We're pretty lucky to have two habitats here at the zoo. Um, and so we rotate them multiple times throughout the day or every other day, or we try to make it different for them all the time. And so, so that they share the space as an equal amount of time. Yeah. So this isn't, so they're not separated. I'm going to go into the why we, why you and I are here and we're in masks. Yes. Because like this is, they're not separated because they're supposed to, they're not in like their own quarantine. Right. This is part of their daily routine or daily their, routine. their life routine here at the zoo. Yes. The only time you're going to find polar bears together out in the wild are either during the breeding season, okay. so you're going to find males and females together for the breeding season. You will see moms and their cubs. Cubs will stay oh, with sure. their moms for about two years. And then the only other time you will ever see a polar bear uh, together is if, let's say, a large whale carcass were to wa uh, wash up, they're going to take that free food. So they will gather um, to, to share that meal. Gotcha. Begrudgingly, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so yeah. he knows how to, that's the, there might have been, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Christine, no, it was fun to watch him turn that upside down this time. I mean, yes. he, there's food in the bottom of this. He knows, he knows. Know and how like cool I said, he's that? got that excellent sense of smell. So if yeah. there's anything in there, he'll know it's in there. That was fun. So Nana yeah. also gets enrichment throughout the day. He actually okay. just set some enrichment out for her uh, before we came over to work with this session with him. Cool. She also gets trained throughout the day as well. And, and they won't be coming back together now. They're right. separated for They're the separated for the season. Their breeding season is over. We usually introduce them together um, like in January-ish, like mid to late January, maybe even early February, depending okay. on what their behavior is telling us. Mm -hmm. And then their, se their breeding season can actually last through April or even May. Um, but we find that Inanna usually cycles in March. 
Uh, and once they gotcha. bleed, that's it. They want nothing to do with each other once that happens. Right. So we'll base their separation off of their behavior. Yeah. So once we stop seeing him guard her, once we stop seeing bleeding, once we see her um, spending time apart from him, that's when we'll go ahead and separate them for the season. And it changes every year. Um, there has been years where they've been together through June, through May, oh, wow. through April. This year it happened in March. Uh, it seems to be getting sooner shorter and sooner. And sooner. sooner. <laughs> yeah. She's done with them earlier and earlier. Yeah, that's year. Funny. But we do base it off of their behavior. Sure. So they're kind of telling us. Exactly. And more she's telling us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nick would probably be with her all the time if he could, but she's kind of, she's older. She's like, I'm right. done with you. That's funny. <laughs> so. And I'm sure Wendy's getting some great shots. It's amazing to watch him move that container around. Yeah. Look at him use those paws and claws. I know, and it's they're so big that he's being so gentle with them. When yeah. he wants to be, they can't. He could squish that thing, I'm Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those big old paws. Wendy getting a shot of him there. Now his claws aren't very big. His right. claws themselves aren't very big. Right. So he's actually his claws are um not going to be his main source of hunting, or it's uh, going to be okay. his jaws. So what he's going to do is he's going to use those big paws to help balance him on the ice and oh. keep him um, upright on the ice. Yep. So they're very spread out. They're very large. They're about the size of a dinner plate. They have fur in between the padding, which you saw a little bit when we did our foot presentation yeah, yeah, yeah. during our training that. session. Uh, and his claws are also going to use these for grip on the ice when he's out on the ice. Uh, but what he'll do when he's hunting is he is going to wait by a seal hole because seals are mammals. They do yeah. need to breathe air. Sure. So even though they can hold their breath for up to 20, 30 minutes, um, he'll wait. He'll wait and then he'll run and grab as much as with his jaws and then he'll kind of help use his paws to kind of pull them out. Okay. But his jaws are going to be and his teeth are going to be that main source of how he hunts. So that head and teeth are the tool, huh? Yes. The killing tools. And his paws are also built to, like I said, crush through that ice. If yeah. he's looking for uh, baby seals in their ice dens mm -hmm. below, um, he's going to use those powerful paws to, to break through that ice. So. Gotcha. That is so neat. Oh, some little bird in there. Yes. Come on, man. You better be careful. Now, he, he, he usually doesn't care about the live <laughs> animals. Um, we do also give our bears whole play twice a week. Um, so we'll do things like chicks or quail okay. that come already frozen and yeah, if you were going to like buy some for your pet snakes or yeah, yeah. something at home. Yep. Um, uh, he doesn't like them. He won't eat it anything that has fur or feathers on it. Really? Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. Anana, on the other hand, will. So there are... So one of the differences. Yes. So if there is something that gets in there and it's slow enough, she'll go after it. Okay. So yes, yeah. But he won't. He usually just leaves it open. I've actually seen a raccoon walk by him. And, and he just said, okay. <laughs> he was like, whatever. Whatevs. <laughs> That's awesome. I know they're kind of like your children. Are you able to pick between one or the other? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love them both. You try not to have favorites. Right, you absolutely. Love, you obviously do. Um, I love Nick. Do you? I do love Nick. I actually uh, have worked with Nick when he was little. Um, oh, no kidding. Yes. So he what was. What a fun story. Yeah. He was born at a zoo up in Ohio, which is where I'm from. Yeah. Um, and I worked with him and his mom up in Ohio. So he was about two, three years old when wow. I was here. Um, and then I went on my separate way and I went yeah. out to work at a different facility. Uh, and then he got moved to a different facility, and then all these years later, we've been able to come back that. here. So Are he was, you crazy? Yeah. So he was my favorite back then. He's been my favorite back now. Well, that um, makes sense. That that that's a little bit of a different kind of story. Yeah. There. Yeah. So I do love him. He, and like I said, he loves to train. He's very playful. Uh, polar bears. One of the big again, one of the big questions we always get here is why are they sleeping all the time? Yeah. Um, but that's one of the adaptations that they have during certain times of the year. They rest more than sure. other times of the year. Uh, polar bears can sleep anywhere from 18 to 20 hours in a day, and that's how they're going to help conserve their energy. Um, but he's never lost his playfulness. So he really <laughs> loves to interact with his enrichment. He really loves to interact with us. Yeah. Um, if you've been to the zoo, he's our resident swimmer. Yes. If you're ever looking at the polar bear who's always in the pool yep. swimming, that's Nikita. 
Uh, Nick loves to be in the pool. But not, not so much. Not so much. During some times of the year, she does. She okay. will get in the pool, but he's in the water all the time. But he doesn't like the rain. It's so funny. He's so <laughs> fickle. So we get a question a lot from our digital guests, our guys that are tuned into these programs. One of the questions they ask a lot is, do the animals have a favorite keeper? And we usually, we, we have to be honest, we usually don't answer that question because we know the keepers are working hard with them and there's a, there's a bond being built all the time. Mm -hmm. Do we see the animals sometimes relate to keepers differently or individual keepers differently? Uh, yeah, you will yeah. see them in, react differently to different keepers. Now we work really hard to have a good relationship with all of our animals. Sure. Because let's say someone gets sick and they're out for a while or someone has a baby and they're on a sure. short leave or someone goes on vacation. You don't want your animals working with just one person. You want to make sure that they are having a good time and they feel comfortable and safe with all their keepers. So we all work really hard to maintain a good relationship with them. Okay. That being said, we all also treat them a little bit differently, even though we don't mean to. We and all, they can tell. They and they can tell. That. They know. They can tell us by our individual sense, how we sure. look, how we sound. Um, and so, for example, our one keeper, Ashley, yep. has a really, really good relationship with Anana. Anana, yeah. like Ashley can go into our back area, Anana will come in and just hang out with her, lay down, fall asleep with her right there. Um, Anana does not do that with me. Right, right, right. That's <laughs> so, fair. Okay, I So Anana it. works with me, and I train with Anana too, but uh, she just has a better relationship with Ashley. The level of her relationships are a little bit different. Yeah, so level of relationships are just a little bit different. And that doesn't mean that the, the animals have a favorite keeper necessarily. We can't, we don't know because sure. we can't ask can them. Sure, can ask them, yeah. Um, but they all do work with us a little bit differently. So. Neat. Okay. Well, there you go, guys. You've asked that question before. Do the animals kind of have their favorite keeper? And to a certain degree, they might. Now, or at least they work with keepers a little bit differently. Absolutely. So cool. Well, thank you for that. We hadn't had a chance to yeah. ask somebody that in the past. So you guys heard Christina talk. Wasn't that a great job? So much fun to hear and see, huh? But you heard her talking about the, the mouth and the face and the head of the polar bear. And that was a killing tool. And it's just the size of it. Are you kidding? Really? This is a polar bear skull. Again, it's a replica. That's the size. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Got Nick behind us there still. And she was saying they have this very strong tool. This right here is a really important tool. What is this? What is that? You guys know what that is. That's the nose, that's a nasal cavity. Do me, do me a favor. Take a deep breath through your nose. Let it out. One more. Sounds like some of you have a cold out there. I hope not. Let it out. So the polar bear's using this sense of smell. What did you guys smell? Anything? I think it's kind of weird. We do this a lot of times with folks at the zoo. Sometimes they say popcorn. I get cheeseburger. I get her. <laughs> so we can smell kind of what's around us. How far did Christina say? 20 miles they can smell their prey. 20 miles they can smell that seal. They can even smell seals. You heard her say they punch through the ice to get the sea lion for the seal pups. They can smell seals under the ice with that incredible sense of smell. Amazing they can do that. They have to because where do they live? Are there a lot of indicators? Are there a lot of things to cue off of? A lot of things to see in the Arctic? No, no way. A lot of things to hear? No, the wind is, the wind is really fierce up there. So smell is something that's always around. They can track the seal with their sense of smell. They can find their mates using that sense of smell. So having that really good sense of smell is important. Christina was talking about how they use this skull to catch and kill their prey. We found out that they use this to find it. They use these to catch and hold on. You guys ready for this? Open your mouth as wide as you can. Open your mouth as wide as you can. I bet the polar bear wins. How about that? Imagine this, guys. Christina said they sit 
right next to the, to the breathing hole of a seal, right? They sit and they wait for the seal to come up. And when that seal comes up, the very last thing they see is this. As the seal is grabbed by the mouth of the polar bear. They grab it, pull it up onto the ice, and that's dinner. One more time, how about that? Pretty impressive, huh? Yeah? Uh, I don't think so. They're not gonna be eating people. They're not hunting people, they're hunting seals. Just give me an idea of the size. So that is the story of a polar bear skull. We learned a little bit about gorillas, how they have this crest, provide strength, same thing with the, for the polar bear. There's muscles attached to there, so I grab onto that seal and I can pull it up out of the water. Imagine being able to pull a 250 or a 300 pound seal up out of the water with just your mouth by grabbing on and pulling it up. Polar bear skull. These guys are really well adapted to life in the Arctic as a hunter. Check this out, guys. Check this out. This is polar bear fur. This is from a group called Polar Bear International. If I was to bet, it was probably an animal that passed away in, uh, in their natural habitat. It wasn't shot and killed. It wasn't killed on purpose. An animal they found, I am sure. But I love this because their fur is really unique. And I bet some of you know, each individual hair is it white? Is each individual hair white? And if it's not white, what is it? Are there some clear answers out there? Yeah. Each individual hair of a polar bear is actually clear and hollow. Might be a little bit of structure within, but it's clear and hollow. But when you stack together all those hairs, when you stack together all those clear hairs, maybe you've seen clear straws or glass straws even. If you stack them together, you can still see them. They're not like they're invisible or anything. So the outer part still gives them that white appearance. So when people ask me, what color is a polar bear? Well, yeah, if you're not dirty like Nick, you are white. Don't let people say they're clear. No, they're not clear, they're not see-through. But the individual hairs are clear. Polar bears are white. And that white color provides that amazing camouflage in the wild. Amazing camouflage where they're from. And they need that camouflage to sneak up on their prey items. Yeah, they might be catching some animals that are coming out of the water. Other times, maybe not. Christina also mentioned that their skin is black. And that's true. You can see it kind of coming through on Nick. If you look inside of his ear, his muzzle is black. Another very important adaptation in the far, far north. Can you imagine being somewhere where the temperatures 40, 50 below zero for several days on end. Being able to absorb any heat from the sun is important. And that black skin absorbs, holds on to the heat. Whatever heat, as small as it might be, is available. You do this all the time without even thinking about it. If I were to come and ask you, what color shirt do you wear in the summertime? Or what color shirt do we not wear in the summertime? We don't wear black. We don't wear dark colors in the summertime because that dark color absorbs or holds on to heat. We wear light colors, whites, things like that, that reflect that heat. So we already do this too. We're using what we know to kind of help make our lives a little bit more comfortable in the heat of the summer or in the cold of winter. Polar bear skir skirts, <laughs> polar bear skin, or fur. Really cool adaptation for the polar bear. And Christina was telling us some really cool stuff. <laughs> Here comes Nick. 
about the breeding program. Remember back, we've talked about the species survival plan. Well, these guys are really active in the species survival plan. Remember, the zoo doesn't get to make the decisions on who breeds who and when. All those decisions are made by the American Zoological Association through the SSP. So Nick, he's here for now, but he's not the North Carolina Zoo's bear. Uh, he actually came from Kansas City, and the people in Kansas City really loved him, by the way. They did, it was really cool to hear when, they, when he was coming here. They were giving, giving him shout outs and really excited that he was coming to the zoo, and they were missing him as well. And the same thing can, can happen with us. The SSP, that Species Survival Plan, that coordinator could make the decision to send Nick somewhere else to pair with another female. It's really important. Yeah, it can be tough sometimes when we really build these relationships with the animals, but it's really important to remember that the, that the zoos, the American Zoological Association zoos, are here for the animals and then for us. So it's kind of nice to think that they're doing whatever they can to make sure that these guys are around for a really long time. The SSP program. We're so glad you guys tuned in today. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit from Christina about Nick, uh, one of our polar bears at North Carolina Zoo, our big male, some of the really cool training that's going on, and all that training having to do with making sure they stay healthy and building those bonds between the keepers and the animals themselves. It was awesome that she said she was able to show, listen to me, I just don't study so cold, that she was able to show us those things. So we truly appreciate you guys tuning in to today's adventure. We see you again Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock. Myself, Steve, and Wendy will be here to share more through the zoo. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.